All right, guys, Grand Training Systems, welcome back. Today's topic is why this shoe, wherever I set it here, sucks. I would have one in my hand, but I would not even buy one because we want to discuss what the heel drop is, what toe spring technology means, and the importance of our foot lying flat. However, before we get started, I want to do a little Instagram shout out for my page, Grand Training Systems. I'm a little bit more popular there, but I'm getting back here because of my online program. So please click the link below if you're looking for a way to fix yourself from home and actually learn the root cause of the problem and set down the goddamn medication, the offers of surgery and getting back to doing what you love. However, with that being said, let's get directly into the topic of why this shoe, I still don't know where it's gonna be, is so bad. So first, let's talk about a heel drop. The heel drop in a shoe, I can actually, I can show you in this shoe right here. So this is a Noble, it's got a three millimeter heel drop, not nearly as bad as your typical Nike or, or, or to be even more specific, like your uh, Air Max and all that jazz. What we want here, well, the Noble actually has a three millimeter heel drop. That's why it's a decent example. So what the heel drop is, is the amount, how do I wanna say this, that your heel is sitting above the front of your foot. Now, in many cases, this, might not seem so important because if your running technique, for example, is good, meaning you're landing on your forefoot, then some people might argue that it doesn't matter what is in the heel. However, I would completely disagree because we know from a lot of research that we have this arch in our foot along with our Achilles in the back of our heel that act as a spring mechanism for this mechanical free potential energy. So it's only potential, so you gotta use it or your body will just not understand what's going on and be, well, you won't use it. That's not a very smart way to say it, but you get my point. So when we land on the forefoot, not like we're running away from Santa Claus on our toes, but on the forefoot, what will happen is that spring in our foot is gonna drop down and then boom, it's gonna push us back up. So as we land on the front of our foot, the forefoot, that heel will drop and that will act as a catapult, a spring to push us forward. But if we are landing on our heel when we run, we don't have that advantage. Now, a little bit of a caveat or a side tangent to why we think this is correct is quite simple. One, because we are like the slowest things in the world when it comes to animals or mammals or whatever you want to call us. We're basically as slow as a hamster. I actually think a squirrel is faster than us. So back in the day, since we are 99% the same as the cavemen and cave women, we needed something to kind of help us out. So one, we can actually perspire when we're moving. Your dog or your cat and all that jazz can't. It's got to actually slow down, take a break and breathe and then start going again, which would not be good because when you're taking a break, you would die. Back in the day, of course, not anymore. So what we also need to have is some type of some type of speed, something that can keep us going a little bit quicker than if we were only walking. Now, the key there is walking. Of course, we land on our heel and we move towards the front of our foot. This is just due to the bone mechanics. You land on your heel, your foot goes down, it goes a little bit into pronation, which it's supposed to, that disperses your body weight, and then you push off with your front of your foot firing the calf to make you move forward. That is because we don't want to abuse, if you will, this potential energy system. We need it when you got to run away from somebody or something, or now in 2019, just run. So when we strike the front of the foot, we have that spring mechanism, but we don't need it when we walk. That is why our running technique should be different than our walking technique. And that is even for you distance runners. So if you're running 5K, 10K, 20K, 2000K, whatever, it doesn't matter. You still want that potential energy. Some estimates are about 15% in your, uh, in your arch and about 25 to 30% in your Achilles. So if you want that for free, you gotta activate it or you're not gonna use it. And when you heel strike, you're gonna pronate because that's what we need to do. So most likely with that excess body weight, you're gonna over pronate. So now if we look at the idea of you landing with the correct position when you're running, nonetheless, this also keeps the foot under the, um, the, the leg under the hip, the hip drive stronger. There's many other positives to landing like this, but 
when you land in this position, if you have all this junk in the trunk, your uh, your absatz, this is was wie sagen auf Deutsch, uh, that's what we say in German, your heel drop, you're, you're already gonna be on the ground because you're gonna have all that bullshit under here and you're not gonna have any place for that foot to spring. So that means if you have terrible shoes on and I have good shoes on, I literally run in these things. That means that I'm gonna have more mechanical energy. We're gonna have the same technique if we both know how to run and I am gonna produce more power and speed just because of what's on my feet because you're literally blocking yourself. Every single time your foot wants to drop down and get that spring-like mechanism, there's basically like a piece of wood underneath, so to speak, that's not allowing that elasticity, that elastic band to snap. So toe spring technology is also not in this shoe because I wouldn't have it if it does, but if you look at a lot of shoes like this, or like this, or like that. I have no clue where these shoes are right now, but I'm just gonna throw, edit them in. You're gonna realize that the foot, the front of the toe comes up. And the idea behind this is quite interesting actually, because now with the uh, heel drop, you start seeing the back of the shoe comes up too. So it basically just looks like it's helping us walk forward because, I don't know, I guess we need the help. And that is such a bad idea because if we don't use it, we lose it. So if we are not using our calf muscles as we walk, or we're not striking our heel correctly, our bone density is gonna go down, our calf is gonna atrophy, so so the muscle back here, your gastrocnemius, your soleus, your Achilles, your arch in your foot, all of that stuff is going to start to atrophy because this shoe is doing everything for you. And then just use your imagination here. See if I can find a cool picture I use when I lecture and I'll put it like up here again. When you what, imagine if your heel is kind of lifted in the air, you've got an arch support in your shoe, which this one also does not have, and then your toes come up. Can you imagine what your foot would look like in a shoe? And then we wonder why we have so many foot problems and in, in pain in our Achilles and plantar fasciitis. It's an absolute joke really, but completely from my end as a physio, easy to understand why we have so many issues. So the toe spring technology, I guess makes sense kind of in a bad, terrible way on paper because it's gonna lift your toes up. So if you think about when you're walking and you heel strike and you go down towards the front of your toes, of course, I guess it's nice when your toes are kind of already uh, on stretch to, to walk, but that's ridiculous because if you took your shoe off, you wouldn't stand with your toes in the air. That makes absolutely no sense. So this toe spring technology, at first, yeah, sure, it's more comfortable. If you stand on a mattress like I did today, it's also comfortable, but it's not natural for our foot. And we know that when we are in a position for more than a few minutes, we begin to adapt to that position. Hence, sitting is the new smoking. Well, it's the same thing for your foot in a shoe like that, which is already bad news enough because we're not supposed to be wearing any of these leather coffins anyways. So then when we start jacking all this stuff like heel drops and arch supports and this toe spring technology, imagine just if your hand was in some crazy position all day and then you started wondering why you had wrist pain. So you wouldn't want the heel raise, you wouldn't want the toe spring technology, and if you think about arch support, support, means like for a little while. A brace means like if some shit is broken. If your arm hurt, I wouldn't put it in a cast. That would make no sense. And if it was broken and I put it in a cast, when I took the cast off, I wouldn't put you directly into a football game and expect you to block somebody. We would realize that that arm has atrophied so much that we need to strengthen that back towards the other one, similar to the other one, so you don't hurt yourself. So this idea that we're just gonna have an pronation, which is not bad, over pronation and collapsing is bad, but then when we have that, we just give you a brace for life, for, for life? That makes no sense. That is, is if I were to give you a cast because your arm hurt and you wore the cast the rest of your life. Imagine what your arm would begin to look like and what it would stay looking like because it would never get stronger. So you would never do that to your arm. You would, so you should never do that to your foot. Now, of course, if you just say, oh, okay, fuck it, throw these shoes away, like those shoes right there, and I'm gonna get something like Vivo Barefoots, which is actually what I wear all the time. I run in these because I do like a little bit more of the support on the hard ground. But if you go from one end to the next extreme, your foot probably will catch on fire, and when it, or your foot or your Achilles, and then when you go back to the 
I don't know, person that seems to think that you need arch support, they're gonna kind of do that, haha, I told you so, that's why you need all this jazz and all this junk in your shoe, which is wrong. You would never start, I don't know, working out the first day and do a thousand sit-ups when you've done nothing before, or if you did, you at least wouldn't be surprised while you had muscle soreness in your abs the next day. So it's the same thing. We need to slowly make the transition. For me, I love the transition of getting someone from a complete bullshit shoe, going to like a no bull, and then slowly bringing them to me personally. I like Vivo Barefoot because it is a nice transition that allows their body to adapt. I think the last piece we should kind of touch upon is that in structural integration, so that's the way in which we fix the body without dosing you up on a bunch of drugs, cutting half your shit off and telling you to stop doing what you love, we look at the body from the ground up. So it's like the leaning tower of Pisa. If it's gonna be completely tilted, fixing the top floor, I don't really need the shoe anymore, fixing the top floor is not gonna do anything. We need to fix it from the bottom, from the first floor, from the Erdgeschloss, as we say in German, which also means first floor, to, to allow it to, to not help fix the symptoms, but the actual problem of the building. Same thing is with you. So the problem there, boys and girls, is your ankle is the first joint, so to speak, that's going from the ground up. So once your ankle gets all jacked up, so for example, I think we can see me here, if my calves start to get tight, they push me forward, so I call it ski jump position, then my knees will adapt to it by locking out to help my balance because my eyes have to stay over my toes, then my hips will drop forward, my back will come back, my shoulders will start crawling over because of my ribs, hopefully you have those, or maybe you do see this, the bro shoulders is actually a little bit of both, they're rolling up and over, but then we get so strong in the chest because we do too many push-ups and chest press that it looks like this. So fixing, the true problem means unwinding the body. Now you probably think that's gonna take years and ages and decades, no, not at all, it's actually very simple. But we wanna focus on what hurts, so if you got shoulder pain, focus on the shoulder, but in this case, we wanna focus on the ankles. If anything else was weak in the body, you go to physical therapy and you do exercises. So why would we not do the same thing for the ankle, and if they did give you a brace for your wrist or your elbow or your shoulder, if your physical therapist or doctor is any good, it's gonna be used as a brace and or support, not some life long crutch. So that is what we need to do to our ankles to start to fix this structural integrational process, if you will, that allows us to begin to live pain-free. And if you think this is all just a bunch of malarkey, I myself am 37 years old, I have scoliosis, I was told I would, I don't know, always have pain, I had plantar fasciitis, knee tendon, I, name a tendonitis, I had it all. By fixing my arches, by focusing on my gait, by learning how to run, and by just following a stretching and mobility plan that was made for, that was meant for my body, I'm fine. So just try this stuff, do the transition slowly, don't go from one extreme to the next, listen to your body and realize you're not gonna kill yourself. So have fun, touch yourself, play with yourself, learn yourself a little bit, and from there, you're gonna get to know and learn the answers that you need or the questions you need to ask and that is why you want to find a professional you can trust to have a dialogue with. This is not a one-way conversation. All right, so guys, thanks for taking the time to watch. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that mo no notification wherever it is now. They always seem to change things on YouTube, or at least I'm not on it enough. I don't know. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. Please share the video. Like I said, check out Grant Training Systems on Instagram. I'm on this like forever shadow ban. I don't know why. I get zero love for my hashtag, so any help that you guys could give would be great. I try to provide interesting content in return. And uh, check out the link to the Unbreakable Body. If you guys have questions about the membership, I actually have a way in which you can physically call me and speak with me about it. So if you're serious, if you want to look at something like that, go on the landing page or see the link, click the link, give me a call, let's fucking talk, and let's get you fixed.